Good afternoon. Our first item of business today is time for reflection, and our time for reflection leader is the Reverend David Coleman, Environmental Chaplain for Eco Congregation Scotland in Edinburgh. So, greetings. Since I was first invited to offer this reflection, I've moved from being a grassroots pastor in Greenock to the national scope of Environmental Chaplain for Eco Congregation Scotland, which is a charity supported by very diverse churches and the Scottish Government. In one way, that's a change of direction. In another, it's an intensification of the same calling. A Christian minister's calling is never simply to speak what people want to hear, even to those who might think they are paying the piper. The very diverse eco-congregation movement encourages faith groups, um, so far Christian, though I, I'm really looking forward to working with Muslims and others. We encourage people of faith to enlist the treasures of their respective traditions in response to the shared global context of climate crisis. This is my second Holyrood event in two weeks. I was part of the lobby on the 19th over climate issues and the church's parliamentary office will keep the conversation going. Now your guidelines stipulate speakers should avoid being political. Let's say that's easy because for us at least 20 years since our friends in the Pacific Island churches realized their homelands would not survive the rise in sea levels, the task I've taken on is unambiguously spiritual, meaning it touches on the deepest essence of who we are and our place in the created order. So no party and no faith group has a monopoly on care of the planet. Jesus encouraged his followers to read the signs of the times in the world around them and pointed out they were very well able to do so and act accordingly if they so choose. Today, in complementary prayer and action, we're seeking collaboration, not competition, as we are overtaken by what we'd rather hoped was going to be the predicament of our grandchildren, and I'm not yet a grandfather. I wish that organized religion as a whole were already setting people such as the parliament a positive and convincing example. In the meantime, we look to you. I'm not here to compete, but to convince, which includes convincing myself and congregations and communities in Scotland to read those signs. In the Bible, God points humanity to the rainbow, a pre-existent phenomenon of universal scientific laws with a promise that rising waters will not bring an end to the world as we know it, which is nice. But people like me are obliged to read more carefully and note that promise comes in context of our valuing and caring for every creature. And complacency is never an appropriate response to God's grace. Thank you. 